This video is about these cheap Chinese gate openers, supposedly 4G gate openers that you find on the internet. And if they're gonna work once 2G and 3G are gone, that's what it's all about. Um, firstly, you shouldn't really be snobbish just because it's Chinese. Everything's made in China. That's where the supply chain is. They have the latest chips and everything there. So you shouldn't just necessarily be snobby because it's made in China. In this case though, they're actually just crap. Um, basically, we, we, look, we took a look at this one. I, this looked quite promising. It came in a lovely box and you know the design of it's really quite nice, but it's just not 4G. It's just pure fraud. It's not 4G. That's a 2G modem inside it. It'll never ever work once 2G is gone. It won't work once 2G or 3G is gone. No. So that is actually just fraudulent. You can see later in the videos that you know we investigated a little bit more, but. Like I can tell you even without looking at the IMEI number that that is not going to be a 4G modem. This on the in the left hand here, that's the smallest 4G modem I've ever seen and it doesn't have 3G in it, it only has 2G and 4G. That's, there's just no way you can fit all the chips in that little package. So it's obviously not 4G, it's just 2G. Anyway, we'll move on to this unit, the RTU 5024. I think that's a lot more popular, okay? I think there's a lot more of them about. And uh, indeed, you know, one of the about 30 quid or something, 40 quid on, on eBay, it's got the Quetel EC25 in it. This here is a Videx 900 pound intercom, okay? That's 900 quid, that's like 30 or 40 quid. It's a gate opener, but you know, this same sort of thing. Um, they actually use the same chips, you know, the, that's got the same, the 30 quid gate open has got the same chips as the 900 pound intercom. So, you know, it's got the potential to work. By the way, that doesn't actually work very well. It works, it works sufficiently well. There are, is 4G calling on 3, EE and O2, not on Vodafone. None of them work on Vodafone. You have to use, basically you have to use a priority access uh, intercom for it to work on Vodafone once 2G and 3G are gone. But returning to this, so it, it's got the potential to work. It's got the potential to work on 4G once 2G and 3G are gone. Um, unfortunately, they just haven't switched it on. <laughs> yeah. So now we see the IP multimedia system running and also we see faulty running, 4G call and running. So that's all they had to do, send three commands to it and then that hardware would actually be fine. But because they didn't send those three commands to it, all these things are going to go in the bin in two years. So we, when we were looking at the Videx Intercom, we, we had a little look at this and we just switched on the 4G call in. And it did actually work on the three, the three easy networks. Didn't work on Vodafone, obviously. Um, and they just failed to switch it on. That's, that's all there was to it. We switched it on, it did work. So we, we'll look at that later. But um, in summary, yeah, if, if you think it, either of these Chinese things are going to work, what, which one is it? It's this uh, G202 Plus or the RTU5024. Unfortunately, once 2G and 3G are gone, that's the end of them. Okay, they're not going to work. You need to buy something proper. We're going to do the unboxing on this soldering desk because we need to add wires onto it, just like you have done with the, the RTU5024. We've already done this. We did this ages ago, about, about a year ago or something. And there was just two test pads on this board that we could solder some wires on so we can see what's happening. You can see that's got the Quectel EC25 in it. This is the other one. Um, this is made by Colney. I don't know, the sticker's all over it. We'll have a look inside it. You know, I, I don't. it could come in by, from various manufacturers. I don't really know, but we got this one just off eBay or something. It's quite cheap, about 30 quid, something like that. We'll uh, unbox it. We'll see what modem it's got. So it calls it a 4G GSM remote controller. We have these pluggable terminal blocks and an aerial. We have this, it's the actual unit. Let's get it out. Um, yeah, we look at that in a second. Oh, a little instruction manual. I think that might be nicer than the RTU5024. I can't remember really, it was a while ago that we opened that, but you can obviously scan that to get the app. That's just a general app. It's not gonna be for this unit, it's just gonna be for everything. Um, maybe I'll have a little read through there, but. What I really want to do is uh, open this up. First impressions is, even though it's made out of plastic, and it's obviously a DIN rail mount unit, you clip down to a DIN rail, see? Um, it kind of just looks like slightly nicer design, maybe. Especially, I think the other one, yeah, the other one's got pluggable terminal blocks too, but uh, it looks okay. Okay, so there we go. Um, right then. Well, that looks quite small for a 4G modem. 
There's a very easy way to find out actually even without removing the sticker if that's the IMEI number you can just find out what modem it is by typing the IMEI number into Google. So let's see what that is there. Other than the modem though it's actually quite nicely designed. I really quite like it. It's uh, very compact. It has a switch mode power supply so it should be quite efficient. Um, yeah the layout's really quite nice. How does that work? Is that open is it? Yeah we just put our little micro sim in there. Actually, it's a really nice little board. To see what chips this thing's got in it, I've gone to imei.info, I've typed the IMEI number written on the can, and I've also confirmed that I am actually a human. So let's check it out and see what it is. And there we go, it's the Air202, whatever that is. I don't really know anything about it, but look, you can see it's just a GSM modem. It's uh, only 2G, that, they're the 2G frequencies, so definitely not 4G despite what it says on the box so yeah if you're gonna buy one of these 4G gate openers just buy the 2G one it, it'll be cheaper and that's just the same what we can do though is we can't see what that is actually I don't know anything about that modem so I will just uh, type that in Luat uh, 202 4G Um, it comes over here look uh, it's obviously Chinese, but Air202, GPRS, GPRS is 2G. Does seem to be some sort of Air 4G version. Let's click on this. I've clicked on it before. Dead slow the internet here, but so there is like a 4G version. Obviously, it's not that. It's it's like too big. You know, the uh, the package is too big. It's not the same. Definitely not what's on our board. And even if we scroll down, I think we'll find. It's, even if it was 4G, it's release 9, which is no good to anybody. Not for a voice anyway, so yeah, don't buy one of them. Rubbish. This one then, just a load of 2G rubbish. So that's not going to survive the 3G or 2G shutdown. It's a load of rubbish, okay? So don't waste your money on that. If you're going to buy one of them, just buy the GSM 2G, 2G version. That's just the same, okay? So that takes us back to the uh, RTU 5024, which says it's a 3G, 4G gate opener, and it does have... You know, it's got a Quectel EC25 4G modem, but this has the MDM9207 chipset, like all those intercoms we looked at, the Videx intercom, the AES intercom, the Comtel intercom. They use the same chips. The, they don't work on Vodafone 4G, we know that much, but they do work on other networks in 4G if you set them up right. So we've got the these test wires connected to the output of their chip. So this is... um. This is RTU, the people who make that this unit, okay? That's their chip. It's got nothing to do with the mobile network. It's just a general purpose microcontroller. And then it feeds into this can, which has got all the 4G chips in it and everything, okay? We're gonna sort of intercept it by connecting onto these test pads and they go directly to the UART connection within the modem so we can see exactly what's going on with our little USB to you are the converter. I've powered it down, powered it back up again. This is the starting point for this RTU5024. You get the ready back from the modem. That's the, the modem saying it's ready. The first thing they do, the people, the people who, I'm going to call them RTU because I don't actually know who makes it, but I'm going to call them RTU. The first thing they do is they ask for the firmware revision. That's just a general, that's just a general AT command for firmware. And then they ask for the IMEI number for the modem. I don't know what they do with it. It's probably not that useful to them, really. What difference does that make? And then the set it so that when there's a network change, it the, the modem tells the chip. So that's what C reg equals two mean. Then it's then it just asks for the clock. Um, there's no reason to ask for the clock there. The clock's not set. You can see if it starts eighty, it's not set. Then it keeps asking for the particular ID number for the SIM card, and it does it over and over and over. And there's no real need to ask for that because it really doesn't carry any information. You can ask for the the IMSI number and the IMSI number has the network code and the country code, but it doesn't ask for that. And then it just goes on to configure. Um, that's the only 4G command I, I can see in the whole thing. Oh, maybe that as well. If it starts with a Q, it's like, it's, it's like modem specific. Other than this though, I think they just basically copied the 2G firmware and put it in that chip and then put a 4G modem in which actually doesn't work okay because you've got to turn on the 
I'll show you in a minute how you do it properly, but you want to turn on the IP multimedia system and stuff like that. So that's all they've really done there. That's all about text messaging. Um, it's got this notification that it's registered uh, on this mast, you know, on this like, uh, it's just, it's actually a three SIM. You'll probably see that later on, I think, but comma seven means it's actually on 4G. So it is actually using 4G at the moment. It's just when the calls come through, they'll have to come through on circuit switched as in um, 2G or 3G, just because they haven't set up the IP multimedia system. So that's all they really do for setup. You know, when you put a new SIM in, that's what they do. It is running again now, and usefully they sent that CREG equals two, which will tell us actually when there's a network change. So I'm just gonna dial its telephone number. So this is the, I'm just me using my mobile to di dial the number of the SIM card that's in, the RTU 5024. Um, and you can see it drops onto 3G. You might be able to hear my phone. There you go, in the background you can hear it. Anyway, what happened there was, we'll just go back up. Uh, when we called it, it dropped down onto, you can see, look, there's been a network change. Uh, comma two means it's 3G. So it's dropped down to 3G whilst it handles the call because it can't handle the call without the, on 4G because there's no IP multimedia system. And then it goes back onto 4G. So that's why even though it's a 4G modem and it's got the same modem as the, like the VidX and the AS and everything, that's why this thing can't handle any any 4G call. I'll show you a little bit more detail now. Hang on. I've changed things now. What I've done is I've plugged the wire into our, our little adapter board so I can start typing things into it. So we see QCFG equals IMS. If we query that, we can see nothing's running. Um, this is the IP multimedia system for these chipsets. It's telling us that it's switched off and so there's no 4G calling. So comma zero there means the IP multimedia system switched off and comma zero there means the 4G calling is not working. Okay, so no matter what SIM you put in it, like even though it's totally capable, even though the actual hardware is totally capable of making 4G calling on the three easy networks, that is EE3 and O2, it, they just haven't enabled the IP multimedia system. So it's really easy to do as well. Yeah, there's two things you have to do. We'll go back to our startup script. I'll copy a little bit in from our startup script. Firstly, you need to actually tell it for starters, what they haven't done is they haven't told it that there's only one aerial because these are designed for two aerials. So I'll just do that now. Okay, and then the next thing you need to do with, you need to turn the auto select off because it always gets it wrong, okay? So we just turn the auto select off on that. That's about the modem binary files. That tells, that sets up, that sets up the uh, IP multimedia system for your network. So we, we're just gonna tell it to, don't do it automatically. We're also gonna tell it to just use the standard, st standard settings, three GPP standard settings for like a, a typical network, okay? And then if we need to customize it, well, we can customize it with that command, but um, I'm just gonna start up the IP multimedia system. And I'm also going to tell it because I wanted to use, um, I wanted to use call the IP multimedia system for both um, SMS and 4G calling. And it basically me putting 03 at the end there tells it to do that. It tells it to use the IP multimedia system for SMS and call. So I'll send that. Okay. Now, even if we just go 80 plus, even if we just check now before, oops, typed it wrong, equals, no. Go, do it right this time. Uh, Q config equals IMS. Now let's just see if the IMS is actually switched on. Okay, it says there's no 4G column, but we haven't rebooted it yet. But yeah, now we've just switched it on. So really, to get this working, it was as easy as just sending this one command through. Uh, you kind of need them all, admittedly. Yeah, you need those three commands really to get it to work. But that's how easy it could have been for them to do it. But they just didn't do it because they don't know, and they just put the 2G software in the 4G unit and I thought it'd work and obviously it doesn't. I'll, I'll demonstrate it working now, one second. That's it, that's it being restarted now. It's just power down, power back up again. We'll see how it gets on. I'll, um, oh, there it is, yeah, so we can see it's back on 4G on this network, it's a different mast, I think. Maybe that's the same mast as before, I don't know. Anyway, it's just changed mast, but it's still on 4G. So I'm gonna ring the telephone number and hopefully this time we'll see it actually not change not change networks like it did before so let's give it a call 
Let's try it. Three sim. I'll put the speaker on. There it is. Four, four, seven. So what what you um what you didn't see there is you didn't see the uh the C reg command saying it's turn change to a different network and come back to that one. And also what we'll do is we'll just check to see if the IP multimedia system is running. Um so let's do AT plus Q C F G equals IMS. Yeah. So now we see the IP multimedia system running and also we see faulty running, 4G call and running. So that's all they had to do, send three commands to it and then that hardware would actually be fine. But because they didn't send those three commands to it, all these things are going to go in the bin in two years. What a waste.